What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the first of many. This is the Air Mattress Series. Welcome to the Air Mattress Series. If you are not caught up, it's probably because you don't follow me on Instagram, which is now just at Brit Shaheen. Um, I moved to Texas. When you're seeing this video, I don't know, honestly, I have no idea what videos I've posted because I don't have Wi-Fi, so I can't even post videos right now. Um, so I'm not sure what you're gonna have seen before you see this, we'll see. Um, what else do I have to tell you? I hope you're having an amazing, wonderful, fantastic day. Go grab some popcorn, grab some wine, drink some wine with me. Take a break from the day, um, and we're, we're gonna, why do I feel so bad saying it? Why do I feel like this is a bad word? You guys, we're gonna talk about sex. We've not had this conversation on my channel. I kind of feel like I'm your big sis and I'm about to tell you about the birds and the bees or something, even though I'm just answering your questions that you have asked me. I don't really know what the rules are for this conversation. I'm gonna give Mila some earmuffs because she's too young to, to hear the things that I'm probably about to say. Actually, I'm gonna get her some more treats so she's busy. Um, note, if you ever see this toy, oh, let go. If you ever see this toy in like a home goods, get it for your dog because this keeps Mila busy for hours and hours. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get her stuff and then we're gonna start drinking and I'm gonna start answering your absolutely outrageous questions. Okay, also if you have no idea what's going on and why we're having the Air Mattress series, I guess I should tell you why. Long story short, I moved to Texas. My movers totally scammed me. We'll look at the video, this video if you're curious what happened. And um, now I don't have furniture and I probably won't for about 10 more days. So I figured we would just have a bunch of girly chats on the air mattress. Cause I have owed you guys a lot of girly chats. I also owe you a say it or shot it. I will probably record that even though I'm scared. Um, yeah, so I owe you some videos and they're all probably gonna be filmed here. But hey, don't you appreciate that I, you know, I decorated with pillows. All I have to my name are a duffel bag of clothes, this air mattress and um, pillows because the rest of my stuff is being held hostage in a warehouse somewhere, so all the more reason to drink. But I got pink wine glasses, so I was like, yep. Mm. I've already had about three margaritas. Thank you, Candace, if you're watching. So I'm ready for these questions. I think without the margaritas, I'd probably be too scared to do this video. So let's see. Also, I don't know why people decided that this video was like questions about my sex life, because it's not about my sex life. It's questions to answer for you, for the record, so I'm gonna be answering those. Oh, and if, if you're wondering, this is a, a taser. I'll show you, it's gonna scare me a lot, I feel bad, but. Taser. This is because I have no curtains and there's a lot of windows right here and I have this really irrational fear and anxiety around someone breaking into my home. So I carry around a taser with me everywhere. So don't try to break into my house because I will tase you or worse. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Honestly, there's no good place to start. This is just gonna, we're just gonna go Right into it. Wow, mom, family, if, you, if you're my blood, please turn, off, turn this off right now. Please don't watch this. Okay, question one says, what do I do if my girl isn't into anal? And are you into anal? Okay, so obviously this is not about me, but I will just answer the question, no. I am not, I have never, I will never. Not, not in the cards for me, not something I enjoy or would enjoy ever trying. As far as you and your your girl, if she's not into it, honestly, you guys, you have to understand, like, if you are a man dating a female, this is the scenario we're talking about here, um, it's not, I mean, some people say it's an enjoyable thing. I don't think it's enjoyable at all. I think it's, like, irrationally painful and unfair to even try to put someone through that. And honestly, if somebody, like, at all ever pressured me to do it, I would, like, run out of the house. I just would not. I absolutely would not. And as far as guys go, like, if it's bothering you that you're with somebody, like, if they don't want to try something, you have to respect that. And you have to respect that that specific sex act is probably very pleasurable for you, but it doesn't mean it's pleasurable for somebody else. If you are one of those people that enjoy it, more power to you. But you just have to respect what somebody else wants. And, like, there's a lot of questions about and I'll, I'll answer a few about like pain during sex and things that are uncomfortable or things that hurt. And if you're dating a girl and something hurts her or something's uncomfortable or she's not enjoying it, like 
Sex is better when both people are enjoying it. And if you're trying to do something that one person isn't enjoying, then it's just not fair and I don't know. I don't think it's the right thing. So if she doesn't enjoy it, you need to respect that and try to do other things that you would also enjoy that she also enjoys as well. Um, if she doesn't want to do it, she doesn't want to do it. So you should out of luck as far as I'm concerned. Next question. This one, this literally says these are going to be outrageous. Yes, they, they are all outrageous. This one says best position for your first time. Like what is the best position for your first time? Honestly, honestly, your first time, I, I don't know anyone that has said that they really enjoyed their first time. As far as like, it, as far as females go, like I've never met a female that was like, yeah, it felt really amazing the first time. Now, the, the part that's special about your first time is if you really love someone and you're really connecting on that level or you're married or whatever that may be, that's what makes it special. It's not necessarily the physical pleasure the first time because it hurts. Like, I'm not gonna say it doesn't. And it's not like, I'm gonna die pain. It's like uncomfortable pain, I would say. It hurts, I'm not gonna bullshit you, it does. I think of it as, this is so stupid, but this is a perfect example. I, I imagine my first time like looking back as like lip filler, like it's uncomfortable and it's painful, but like it's not so uncomfortable that it's not worth it if it's something that you truly want. So as far as what is the best position for your first time, I think that completely depends on the person. There are some positions that some people just absolutely hate because it's uncomfortable for them. And there's some that I hate and somebody else loves, for example. And I think that just depends on you. But likely for your first time, you're probably going to be doing missionary. Like the guy's probably just going to be on top. And I would say generally that's the most comfortable position for females. So if I had to like suggest one, I would say that's probably what's like most likely to be the least painful would be just missionary. But I mean, who knows? Like once, once it's something that you do and if you're in like a safe relationship, then it's fine. Also, you guys, when I'm talking about this, like please be safe, okay? Please don't be stupid when it comes to sex. Don't let anyone ever force you into anything. Respect yourself, respect your body, and like you have to know what you're comfortable with and what you're okay with and when. And if you don't trust the person that you're sleeping with, you're probably not gonna enjoy it um, because it is like a really intimate thing and I don't know, you have to trust someone to, to do that and not feel scared. So anyway, next one. Does a guy on gear affect his performance in bed? I don't know. I don't know if it affects it negatively as far as like things aren't working. Like I remember always reading and seeing on TV and stuff that like things shrink for guys that are on steroids. I don't know how much truth is in that. I'm not a guy, but I, as far as performance goes, I would say I haven't experienced anything being like affected by it. I would say the biggest difference of dating a guy that like when he's on steroids, his sex drive, because he's probably taking testosterone is like through the roof. And I mean, at least for most people, I mean, I know a couple girls now that are dating guys that are on here and they like cannot keep up with their boyfriend because like all he wants to do is have sex all the time because his testosterone is so high and it's like exhausting for them. So I would say that would probably be the expectation. Like if you are a guy, and you're getting on steroids, you're probably gonna have a very, very high sex drive for a while. And if the person you're with doesn't have the same sex drive as you, again, you have to respect that, so. What age did you lose it? I, I guess I can answer that one. I lost my virginity when I was, how old was I? I think I was 17. It was on Halloween. I was a cat that year and it was horrible. And I wish my first time wouldn't have been my first time. Don't waste it because that's a special thing. So enjoy it with somebody that you care about and they really care about you. I will say that because mine sucked. How to avoid tension in being awkward for the first time as a virgin? I mean, it's a little awkward the first time, all of the time. I think it's commonly now when somebody has sex for the first time, usually one of the people is not a virgin is I feel like what normally happens. But if you both are, I would just say like, if you're really ready, it's not gonna feel like a scary, terrifying, oh my God, I hate this moment. Like if you're ready for it, it will just kind of feel like an extension of your relationship. And it is a little awkward just because it's like a foreign thing. You know, it's anytime, it's like anytime you do something new, like it's uncomfortable and it's kind of weird, but I mean, I guess over time, it's just not awkward anymore. And I think so much of the awkwardness, especially for girls, stems from insecurity. Like we tend to be worried about like, oh, what if this doesn't look the right way? Or what if I look this way? Or what if I sound 
XYZ way and so much of that is just about like not being secure with who you are and how you look and at the end of the day like you are more than enough and you have to know that and you have to know um, what you're worth and that that you were like perfectly made and if that's not enough for somebody then it's their loss. Why is it illegal to do reverse cowgirl in Alabama? Is that true? <laughs> is that honest? Okay, this one says, is it okay to experiment with girls even if you think you're straight? Okay, this is from a girl. I'm gonna answer this. I think it is okay to explore your sexuality, of course, and decide what it is that you want and decide what it is that you like and that's different for everybody and you know whatever you decide to do as far as your sexual preference goes I respect you and I love you and that is fine and as far as like is it okay to do absolutely I think it's okay to figure out what you like and I think women especially I mean I don't think I even know a girl that has never had an experience with another girl even if it's just like kissing a girl when they're drunk or something I don't think it's out of the ordinary I don't think it's weird I think you know, if it's something that you want to try and confirm if you like it or not, or if it's for you or not, then that's okay. And having one experience with one person of the same sex doesn't necessarily mean that that's your preference. And I guess it's like you never know it if you don't try. And if that's like an itch you have to, to figure out um, and you're in a safe place, then I don't see the harm in it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So you do you. What is this one? Thoughts on casual sex with an ex of years. No emotions on my end, possible on his end. Casual anything with an ex is a no. It's a no. It's an absolute no. It is a no, no, no. There's too many feelings involved. Somebody will always get hurt. If you have the emotional capacity to be a friend with benefits or something along those lines with somebody, then it cannot be somebody that you previously were in love with or had a serious relationship with. It's just not gonna work. You're always gonna get hurt, it's gonna be messy, it's gonna be a whole thing. If, if you so badly wanna have casual sex with somebody, then you need to go find somebody to have casual sex with that you have not ever been in a relationship with. That's a no. We, when we walk away from our exes, we do it for a reason and we don't go back because that reason still exists today, period. What are girls' biggest non-physical turn-ons? I don't always want to be physical, okay. Okay, for me, I will just, whatever. I really, in the past, have enjoyed, like, I, uh, oh my god, this is so hard. I don't know how to have these conversations without being, like, totally raunchy. So, for me, like, a non-physical turn-on is if a guy messages me or, like, texts me or whatever it is, and like makes plans or like says our plans for later so you're like thinking about it in the back of your mind all day i'll just give you an example because i know you guys are going to ask i've gotten a text along the lines of i'll be over at this time be in this place wearing this thing or not wearing this thing what are your thoughts on marrying the first person you have sex with i am so impressed and in awe of people that do this, honestly. I think it is so rare and amazing now, like to meet somebody that saves themselves for marriage. Like how special is that? And I think it's true that it's like such a sacred thing. And that's, I mean, I can't imagine how special that would be. This is how many kills do you have? Is that what we're calling it now? Kills. Oh my God. <sighs> oh, this one's good. <laughs> how to do well on top for women. Up and down just doesn't cut it. <laughs> okay, can I just say for all the women, this is a difficult thing to do, okay? It does not come as naturally, I think, for women as it does for men. As far as how to do it, I feel like myself into in this video. I don't enjoy myself as much on top. It's not my preference. However, if you, talking to the females, if you haven't gotten off yet and you want to, I think there are a couple of ways to be on top. So there is the way that you are not going up and down, but you are going forwards and backwards. If you feel me, you can get off that way. Like the motion of that. I don't know how to make this freaking YouTube friendly. Just the forwards and backwards, trust me, stay in the same place, move forwards, move backwards, you know. Just think like when a guy grinds on you with his clothes on, like you're doing the same thing, but you're doing it and you're on top. Highly recommend. Now, as far as the up and down situation, my only recommendation that I can tell you that is helpful, maybe, 
is for you to lean forward. You can put your hands like either side or on the headboard or something and use that to like stabilize you and try it that way. Or, you know, if you're feeling frisky, you could turn around the other way and see how that works for you. That might work. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, moving on. Best foreplay a guy might not know. Um, you need to spend like way more time than you think you need to spend getting someone ready to have sex, period. Like that goes for guys and girls. You can't, you can't just like go for it. Like when guys, I've literally been in an experience where a guy has tried to like be with me and he's just gone right for it. And I literally was like, what are you doing? What do you think you're doing? That is not how this works. There's some time before we're getting to that. Like you need to figure it out or I'm just gonna go. And, and you have to respect that. Like you, I mean, if you're a woman and you're not getting what you want, you better fucking ask for it or you're never gonna get it. Like you have to ask for it. And honestly, a lot of guys don't know. And I have experienced this where a guy literally just didn't know what to do because females had never asked for it or expected it. And the first time that this person was with me, he was like, oh, I didn't even really, like I'd never done that. Like I, you know, I didn't know. And I think some cases guys are just selfish and they just want to like get off. And then there's other cases where they legitimately just don't know, but they would, would be willing to do it. So as far as like things that they don't know, it's just like for a woman, like when you're doing foreplay with a woman, it's literally preparing her body for sex. Your body changes and expands and like prepares itself for sex. And that's not going to happen if you don't spend the right amount of time. Here, here's my philosophy. If you're a guy and you're listening to this, if you are doing the foreplay situation, if she's not begging you to, to, you know, then you're probably, you probably haven't done enough foreplay. Like you shouldn't have to like be on top of her and be like, can I, or like, should I, or like do it and have her freaking wince. Like you need to do so much foreplay that she's to the point where she's like saying please or like asking you to do it because she wants it that bad. And that's how you know you've done enough. So that's what I'm saying. And I don't know, girls, if he's not doing that for you, then find a guy that will because, oh, there's a lot of questions about if I like getting my feet kissed and the answer is no. How do I tell my husband he isn't satisfying me in bed without hurting his feelings? Tell him. You have to tell him. You have to be honest about this stuff and what you like and what you don't like. And I wouldn't directly be like, you're not satisfying me in bed. Just ask for the things that you want that you're not getting. And like, there's a way to do this. Ideally that you wouldn't hurt someone's feelings. For you, since you're talking about your husband, let's be clear. Men need direction. They need, <laughs> they need maps, okay? So for me, if someone is ever doing something that I'm not enjoying, I am very quick to just be like, do this or stop there or slow down or if someone's hand isn't where you want it it's very easy to just grab it and move it that is that is my best suggestion you just you have to be honest about it and i think if, if you talk about it while you're having sex it's a lot less awkward than if you talk about it when you're just like sitting together maybe before it starts you could be like i really like it when you do this or like i would love it if you did this because when you're in the middle of it, it's like a little bit sexier and easier to talk about than when you're just like sitting there staring at each other in the face. You know what I mean? You could also, you know, you could just show up to your night with like a toy or something and be like, what if we tried this? And maybe that would help. I mean, there are options. There are lots of things out there. So just suggest it. Don't be scared to ask for what you want because as far as I'm concerned, guys pretty much are going to enjoy sex all of the ways. Like even if sex for us is bad, it's probably still good for them. And we know that because nine times out of 10, they don't stop until they finish, right? Yeah, you just, you have to ask for it. You gotta ask for what you want, otherwise you're just wasting your time. Oh, I answered this. How bad or good was your first time? Freaking horrible. What's an average amount of times per week to do the dirty? Uh, totally depends. Totally depends on the person. I have been with somebody that it was like two times a day or more. And I've been with somebody that was like once a week. It just totally depends on what you want. Depends on your sex drive and that's different for everybody. I will say, when I got off, I was on the same birth control from the time I was 16 to January of last year. And when I tell you, my life changed when I got off that birth control. Could have partly been, you know, that I didn't have a sex drive because I was with somebody that I didn't want to be with anymore. That could have had something to do with it. But also there were so many moments over those years where I felt like something was wrong with me because I didn't want to have sex all the time and I didn't have a sex drive. Like I didn't have moments where I was like, oh, I really want to right now. Like I didn't experience that. And when I got off that birth control, 
I was like a different person. I finally had a sex drive and I was 24 and I was like, holy crap, this is what it's supposed to be like and it's okay to want to and XYZ and just consider that like if you are somebody that has no sex drive at all and you're like what's wrong with me a it might be that you're with somebody you don't want to be with but B it could be that your hormones are kind of out of whack and maybe there's something wrong um, because I my life is so much better <laughs> without without that birth control I'm on a different one now um, that has different and great side effects ugh, but otherwise I have a sex drive now which is lovely and I didn't have it before so you know how to not feel ashamed buying a vibrator Buy it on Amazon and it will come in an unmarked package and no one will know. <laughs> ah, here's another one. How should guys talk to girls during sex? Okay, I could go on about this all freaking day, you guys. I hate, I hate how 99% of men talk or don't talk during sex. I hate it, I hate it so much. I don't know why they don't know what to do. I don't know why men haven't figured this out yet. I don't, I don't understand. Um, okay, so this is, this is, this is uh, how, how do I say this? I think I can speak for all of the women, maybe, that we don't want, okay, I, if I can find the TikTok that I'm thinking of right now, I'm gonna put it right here and I'm gonna let the TikTok explain so that I don't have to. Why can't y'all just like be in our ears like, damn yeah. Fucking like shit, fucking like shit, fucking say it louder. But no, y'all want to be like, oh, fuck. Ugh. We don't need you to um, quietly <laughs> moan in our ear or say nothing or be silent. Like, I don't, I don't want to hear you grunting. I, I just don't. If you're gonna say something, first of all, if you're not gonna say something, if you're not somebody that talks during sex, then turn on music because otherwise you're just like hearing sound. And turn the music on or you need to be like talking to me or saying something because otherwise it's just silent and sometimes that's not great. As far as how to do it, tell them what you like. Tell them what feels good. Tell them where you like it. Tell them how you want it. Be specific <laughs> because it's sexy when you are and when you really like something, tell someone. I mean, it's, it's like encouraging, honestly. And there's so much insecurity around sex about is it good? Do they like it? Are they enjoying it? What if they're not enjoying it? I know for girls especially, like when girls give head, they're like, what if it wasn't good? What if I did a bad job? How do I do it? Like I literally sat down with one of my girlfriends at a bar and she was like, okay, but how do I do it? Step by step, how do you do it? <laughs> and you learn because people tell you. People tell you what they like. I experienced that with the first guy that I was ever with. I remember just feeling like, what if I'm doing something wrong? And I just was like, tell me, like show me how you like it. Like show me how you want me to do it and it was helpful. When you're first with somebody, like you're not gonna know those things. Like you're not born knowing how to give a blow job. Like I'm sorry, you're just not. <laughs> I can't believe I just said it on YouTube. <laughs> you, like these are things that you just like know. So don't be scared to ask because ultimately it's just gonna result in that much more pleasure for both of you. Don't be dumb, just, just be specific. It's hot and mean it. But it's worth trying because maybe you're somebody that can like dirty talk and maybe it's your thing and you just don't know it's your thing. So well, we'll see. Also, practice via text if you're not sure what to say. You can say things via text and get brief. And then over time, maybe you'll feel comfortable saying it in person. So, okay, that's it for this sex talk. I've, I've literally had half this bottle of wine after my several margaritas, so I think it's time to go to bed. On my comfy, wonderful air mattress. Love this for me, gonna sleep great. Got my taser. Honestly, my life. I'm in a giant empty house with an air mattress and a taser. What is my life? That's okay. All right, so I'm gonna go to bed. Thank you for the questions. I hope you learned something today. If you wanna see more of these videos, leave me a comment, let me know, and I can make more because I have lots of time in this empty house on this air mattress. So I will make more girly chat videos. I'm also gonna make one, like a separate one about like relationships. I'm probably gonna do one where I'm gonna read and react to your confessions, which I'm really excited about, like your, your deepest, darkest secret. I'm gonna read them uh, anonymously, but I'm gonna read them and make a video about it because I feel like that'll be really fun to watch. Also, I'm gonna record a Sandra Shot a video and I'm gonna sit here and get really drunk for your entertainment. So follow me on Instagram at Brishaheen so you can enter into those ridiculous videos and ask me your questions and tell me your deepest, darkest secrets and all the things. And subscribe if you haven't already and like this video if you learned something or 
if you enjoyed it at all. Um, and that's it. So yeah, I hope you have a, a great, wonderful, fantastic day. I love you guys so, so, so much. I'm gonna lay in bed and finish my wine. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next